the dream I know Deep up my feelings feel Watch The headlines Strike Federal government threatens labor with contempt charge. Nigeria Labor Congress remains adamant. But before we proceed with this news, welcome to Reality Letters Just your home of news and politics. Thank you all so much for joining us on today's news. If this is the first time of watching, please do also be to like and subscribe and also the notification bell to get notified when there's a drop our video. You can send in your comments and keep the conversation lively in our comment section. To all our amazing subscribers, thank you all so much for joining us on today's news. To all our viewers, feel relaxed, enjoy, and stay connected. The federal government on Monday asked the organized labor to shift its planned strike slated to commence on Tuesday, being today. The government reminded the Nigeria Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress of a restraining order issued by the National Industrial Court, Abuja, on Friday. The Trade Union Congress President, Festu Zosifo, announced at a press conference in Abuja on Monday that the labor action would commence on Tuesday in protest against the alleged assault on the president of the Nigeria Labor Congress, Joe Ajero, by suspected talks in Oweri Imo State on November 1st. The president of the National Informatics Center, Justice Benedict, restrained the labor center and their affiliated from embarking on any form of strike. The judge issued the order following an ex parte application brought before the court by the federal government through the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Chief Latif Fagbemi San, the Special Assistant to the Attorney General of the Federation on Communication and Publicity, Kamaruddin Ogudeli, in an interview with one of our correspondent warned the union that any action taken in violation of the court would amount to contempt. He said that there is a subsisting court order stopping them from going on strike. So they wish to advise the labor union and the affiliate union on the need to respect the rule of law and the courts. He said that nobody should take laws into their own hands, that they should not resort to self-help since the matter is before the court and the appropriate thing to do is to allow it to adjudicate on the case. Speaking at the news conference, Osifo explained that all the affiliates of the Nigeria Labor Congress and Trade Union Congress had been mobilized for the strike, which might paralyze economic activities across the country. Ajero and other labor leaders led a protest in Oweri, the Imo state capital, over the alleged failure of the state government to pay its worker, among other grievances. But the demonstration had hardly started when the labor leaders were allegedly physical attacked by talks, who also disrupted the protest. The strike declared in the state also failed to gain traction as the workers boycotted its while banks and other commercial centers opened for businesses. Narrated his audit to journalists in Abuja on Friday, the Nigeria Labor Congress president explained that the police in Oweri handed him over to talks who brutalized him. Ajero, who wore a dark shade to cover his solo eyes, said he can't explain the beating he received, that they tie his hands and drag him on the floor like a common criminal, and he's not even a card carrier member of any political parties. As alleged, the state governor, Hopo Zodema, accused the labor leader of meddling in the affairs of the state, hinting that Joe Ajero's actions was politically motivated. The Imo State Police Command claimed that the Nigeria Labor Congress president was taken into protective custody to save him from a mob attack. The incident was widely condemned by prominent Nigerians and civil society organizations, including the presidential candidate of the Labor Party, Peter Obi, and human rights lawyer, Mr. Femi Felani San. In response to the alleged maltreatment of the union leader, the organized labor directed the aviation workers to shut down the Oweri airport. On Thursday, the labor leader picked the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, and granted all Oweri bond flights in Abuja and at the Moita Mohammed International Airport, Lagos. Stressing the imperative of the strike, the Trade Union Congress president said they want the government to meet regarding the brutalization of the president of the Nigeria Labor Congress. So they want to set some conditions and those conditions are very clear without ambiguity whatsoever. So he said those people that brutalize 
their president, Joe Ajero, must be arrested and they must be prosecuted. He added that a man who led the talks was popular, adding that he should also be arrested and prosecuted. The Trade Union Congress president added that the two labor centers have resolved to stand firm by the decision of the joint neck that was heard last week Tuesday, effective of 12 a.m. on the 14th of November, they shall declare a nationwide strike. Ahead of the strike, the union have written to all their members to down troll. A letter jointly signed by the National Secretary of the Nigeria Labour Congress, Emmanuel Nguaja, and the Secretary General of the Trade Union Congress, Nuhu Toro, dated November 13, 2023, directed the athletes' union to comply with the strike directive. The athlete included the Academic Staff Union of University, National Union of Electricity Employees, Nigeria Union of Teacher, Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria, Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics, and dozen of other across various sectors. In compliance with the directive, the Maritime Workers Union of Nigeria said its member would participate in the nationwide strike. A statement on Monday by the head of media of Maritime Workers Union of Nigeria, Johnny Kimifula, said that the strike was coming on the instruction of the Nigeria Labour Congress after its National Executive Council meeting held Monday directed all affiliates of the Nigeria Labour Congress to strictly comply. He stated that the Nigeria Labour Congress and Trade Union Congress took this decision after their joint meeting in Abuja, which was prompted by a series of infractions and encroachments of the rights of workers and the distressing incidents involving the abduction and assault on the Nigeria Labour Congress President, Comrade Joe Ajero, and other unions, officials, and their continued refusal of government to implement agreements, non-payment of backlog of salaries, pensions, discriminatory payment of salaries and non-compliance to national minimum wage. He further highlighted the potential consequences of politicizing the National Informatics Center's operations, noting that it could undermine the court impartiality, posing a threat to the industrial relations system. When asked what the police would be doing regarding the planned strike by the labor leader, despite the court order restraining the industrial action, the Lagos State Police Command spokesman Benjamin Hudi said that the only job they have to do is to foretell breakdown of law and order. That is what they have always done and that is what they will do. So guys, do let us know your thoughts, your contributions, your opinions are in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. Once again, thank you all so much for staying tuned with us. We really do appreciate. On this note, we have come to the end of today's segment. Like, come your witness. Stay safe, guys. Bye.